Hey everyone, Kev Muldoon here. In this video, what I'd like to do is review the Google Nexus 6P. Now, I've published quite a few videos about this already. I did an unboxing, I did a jeans test and things like that. What I want to do in this video is give you a review about how I've found the phone over the last week or so. I've had it close to two weeks now, so I think I've got a, a good idea of what's good about it and what's bad about it. This review isn't going to be as in-depth as a lot of other channels. Now, when phones like this are released, a lot of YouTube channels and a lot of websites, they do really in-depth reviews about the specifications, about the performance. They're, they're comparing battery life against 10 other phones. They're comparing camera shots and video shots against 10 other phones. That's, you know, that's not something I'm going to be doing. Consider this a review for the average Joe. This is just an average guy's um, opinion about how the phone works on a day-to-day -day basis, what I like, what I don't like. I think you'll know already that I love this phone. You know, I've, I've talked about this in the previous videos. This is a fantastic phone. I really am pleased with the purchase. I just want to I just want to talk about the good things about it and the bad things. Um, there's not too many bad things, to be honest. And the first thing I noticed about this when I came from the HTC One M8 was the software. This has got Android 6.0, Marshmallow, and... I came from 5. Point, I think it was over 5.1 and I mean it's Android, it's still Android, everything is pretty much the same but I came from the HTC phone where it had HTC Sense so you know they had a lot of overlays, a little couple of extra features in there, some which were very useful and some which were not and it took me about a day or so you know just get used to a different phone, it's essentially the same operating system but I've been very happy with it, the the one thing I did notice was obviously the performance was a lot better. This is, without doubt, this is a, a top end um, smartphone. There's, it's got pretty much the best of everything. You know, it's got three gig of RAM. It's got the eight ten uh, Qualcomm processor. It's got um, was it the four thirty Adreno, Adreno four thirty GPU. Now I haven't I haven't been using this for games. The only games I really play are kind of. Like little, um, I used to play Clash of Clans. I'm now playing Sim City. These kind of games are designed for mid range phones and up, or even entry level Android phones. So I've not really tested it. I haven't downloaded a really high intensive game for this. Um, it's not the kind of thing that I do. To be honest, I, when I first got phones years ago, um, I would download a lot of these, you know, really intensive arcade games. After a while, I found that I was playing the little silly games a little bit, you know, like Candy Crush things like that, a little bit more addictive. But I don't think anyone will have any problem with that. You know, from a performance point of view for gaming, you're not going to have any problems with that. You're not going to have any performance with YouTube videos or things like that. From from a, a user's point of view though, my last phone wasn't terrible. But it was starting to lag sometimes, you know, when you're switching between apps, it would occasionally crash. It wasn't a big problem, but, but this... I have noticed, I mean, it, it, there's no problems with that whatsoever. Everything is smooth, everything. You, you jump between apps and it's effortless, you know. And that is something you'll find out really quickly when you're using this. Especially if you're upgrading from a phone that was released about a year or two ago. So, you won't have any problems with the performance. Now, the other thing about this phone, which I've found fantastic, is the battery. Um, and there's two things, the battery life and the battery charging. Now... With the battery life, this is a bigger phone. It's got a 5.7 inch screen, but it's got a 3,450 milliamp battery. Now, I wasn't sure how much that would transfer to battery life because a bigger a bigger phone requires a bigger battery. So it wasn't clear that, you know, that, that a bigger battery would equal better battery life. I'm not sure if it's because of the screen or if it's because of the Android um, operating system, because of Marshmallow, because this is running... You know, this is uh, using the stock version of Android. There's no bloatware. You know, with with the HTC phones, with Sony phones, with Samsung, you got a lot of apps you can't remove. There's a lot of stuff going in the background that they've added, trying to op optimize it. But well, in their in their eyes, optimize it. But this doesn't have that, and I think that's the reason why this is the battery life is so good. It's one of the reasons why you know because I'm using stock Android, and it really does seem to be optimized really well. You get fantastic standby time on this. In my last phone, if I sat my phone next to my bed and I didn't charge it, by the morning it probably dropped about 20, 30, perhaps even 40% in battery life. And that's even with me using optimization apps, 
switching off all the, the bloatware as much as I could. But this doesn't seem to have that problem. It only seems to drop a few percent when you leave the phone for overnight. The standby time, really, it really does seem to be really good. It says here that standby time is 440 hours and talk time is up to 23 hours. So the battery life is fantastic. Now, one of the things that um, this phone has is this. This is a USB Type-C, I think it's called. Now, this doesn't work with your, your regular USB cables. And if you've got a lot of USB cables lying about, that can be a bit of a pain. You know, I had a charger downstairs. I had one in my car, but those don't work. I've only got one charging cable now, and I've got an adapter for another to plug into another uh, USB port. So you're going to have to buy, well, you don't have to, but I think it'd be helpful if you bought another cable or two. You know, I'm, I'm planning on buying another one for the car, one downstairs and maybe another backup. So in a way, it's a little bit of a pain because this is getting this technology ahead of other phones and you've probably not got the cables for it. But this fast charging thing, you know, it's not something that I really cared about before buying the phone. Honestly, I, I didn't care when I was buying this phone, the fast charging thing wasn't an issue for me, especially because I work at home. You know, when I, when I, I work at home, and then, you know, I go to the gym or I go out with friends and things like that. I can I know when to charge my phone. I would charge my phone at night and then I would maybe charge it for an hour or so during the day whilst I was working. So I didn't, I didn't think that fast charging would be a big thing, but I was wrong. It's absolutely fantastic. You can get, it says it claims up to be about seven hours of use from 10 minutes charging. You, you switch it on, I mean, this gets fully charged so quickly. It's... In 10, 15 minutes, you can go from like 20% up to 60, 70%. And it's fantastic. I found it really useful because there's lots of times where you don't think, you don't even know that you, that you forgot to charge the battery. You know, I don't have to think about it anymore. They used to, I had, I had to used to plan it and go like, well, there's my phone sitting there for two hours or three hours. But I don't now because I know I can be lazy with this and run it down to 5, 10% and then go, I better charge it. And within half an hour, I pretty much get a full charge. And... That is a fantastic feature and it's a it's a fantastic selling point for this phone. It just makes it more practical to use and I think that's the way that all smartphones are going now. Now the other thing would be size. Um, I mean I've talked about size before. I've talked about size in the unboxing and it, it, it was my main reservation before buying this phone because I was going from a 5 inch screen to a 5.7 inch screen and this phone is bigger. There's no doubt about it. It's a big, big phone. Personally, I haven't found it an issue. I got used to it very, very quickly. And I think that's because where the fingerprint sensor is placed and where the power button is placed, you know, you hold, I hold it like that. So you never really put your hand to this top area of the screen. The, I, I just assumed, like with my last phone, the, the power button was in the top. So I was always kind of reaching up and it was a little bit uncomfortable to get up to there. But I don't have that problem with this one because I grip it like that. If you look back, Look back to my jeans test video if you're if you're unsure about it. But um ideally what I would recommend is going to a shop. I know that's not possible for all of you. I, I, there was someone who left a comment and said that they couldn't actually get to a shop because where they're from they have to just you know you have to bring it in a uh, mail order. But if you can, if you're from a country like the UK, Europe, the US, etc., if you're from if you're living in a country where you can go and actually physically see this phone I would I would do that unless you're coming from another big phone already if you're coming from another big phone it won't be an issue but if you're jumping from a smaller phone I think it is worthwhile to go in and just check the size of it because it wasn't an issue for me but when I've been sitting with friends I've sat the phone down and I've showed them it because they all wanted to see it you know because it's a, it's a new phone it's a new top of the range phone and a lot of them some said it wasn't a problem but there's a couple that said that no I couldn't use a phone that big and it is understandable. Like the, the jeans that I've gotten just now were the ones that they sit in the pocket fine. But there's a few, there was one of the jeans that I tried on and it sits just kind of at the top and it kind of sticks out a tiny, tiny amount. It's it's not a big issue, but it, I do think that if I was going out, you know, you're a little bit self-conscious that it's poking out a little. And, and I think you, th you believe that the phone could slip out easily, even though it doesn't. You know, I didn't do that because, you know, I was out, I was drinking and the phone didn't slip out. So it was okay in the jeans, but I, I just, I'd rather, I'd rather bigger pocket. So I think that's more of an issue. Like if I'm moving forward and I'm used to this size of phone, I think I'll just buy jeans with bigger pockets. And it's, it's an, it's an easy solution for me because the actual size and weight of this isn't a problem for me. 
but I do I do appreciate I mean because I had, I had big reservations about the size as well so if you do have reservations I would if you can go to your shop pick it up ask if you can put it in your pocket you know so they don't think you're stealing uh, and try and try and get a feeling for it if you can't do that then use one of these visualization um, comparisons you know like there's websites that allow you they tell you the specifications and then you can you know can do a cut out yourself cut a little bit of cardboard or paper and just hold it and then try and get some sort of idea whether you'd be comfortable with that it's not perfect but it will give you some sort of idea of whether the size is an issue now I did say that the power button here is a good thing because you can just switch it on there um, the power button works really well where it's positioned and if you push it twice it brings on the camera so I really like where the, the power position is, uh, the power button is, sorry. The only thing I would say though is I'm still kind of getting used to the volume buttons because they're underneath and sometimes my finger it gravitates and I push it thinking it's the power button and vice versa. I'm just getting used to it. You know, I've only had the phone two weeks. But I don't like... I, I'm kind of conflicted because I love where these buttons are but the one thing I've found is that you know, with the accessories, accessories I already had. I talked about this in the vlogging video. Um, you know, I can I can hold in, put it in a smartphone holder, and then I can screw it into a selfie stick, or I can screw it into a tripod. The problem is that where this holder is, this grips where the power button is and where the volume button is, so it's not a big issue. I'm not going to be using this with a selfie stick anyway, so that's not a big problem for me personally, but... I did find that in my car, you know, I have a, something similar to this in my car for holding it. And I was using it, the, um, the phone for satellite navigation. Now, this is really good for satellite navigation because, you know, it's a bigger screen. And it's I, f I found it really good. You know, it's really fast. The performance is really fast. It's, it's, it saves me having to buy a, a, a dedicated satellite navigation device. But again, because of these buttons in the middle, they're in the middle, what I need to do is... I've been balancing it kind of like that at the bottom. The problem with that is when I've been driving, the phone seems to go like, you know, it goes a little bit off center and once it actually fell off, that isn't a criticism of the phone though. That is me trying to use accessories designed for smaller phones because although this does fit this, this was really designed for phones that were between four and a half and five inch, um, five, five inch screens. So, what I'm going to have to do if I want to resolve that is basically just go out, buy different accessories. I need to buy a card holder for the Google Nexus 6P and I need to buy something. If, if I'm going to be using it on a tripod, I need to use a, um, I need to purchase a different um, smartphone holder. Just a minor, very, very minor thing. That's me really being picky if I'm by, by bringing that up. But it is something worth pointing out. As far as the speakers go, I don't think they're as loud as the HTC uh, One Eight that I had. Um, I'll try and find an example of music or something or anything. That's yes, Cinema Sins. So I'll just quickly play. So I'll put that. Very loud. The HTC Sense. Uh, speakers, the 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 speakers on HTC phones tend to be better because they they always put the speakers on you know really good speakers on the front, but these speakers are very good. Just in comparison to my last one, they're just not as good, but they are pretty good. So I've got no problems with the call quality. I've got no problems with the microphones. I've got no problem with problems with the speakers. So everything is good in that respect. Now another feature, which um. I would like to talk about is the fingerprint sensor. Now, this is something that I was quite keen on, but I didn't realize how important it was. The fingerprint sensors have been available on phones for a couple of years now. Um, you know, there was phones from China putting them out, and then there was, um, I can't remember if it was an Android phone that put one out. Obviously, Apple have been using it for a couple of years now, and with Apple's phone, you've got it with the, the main button down here, and you would hold the button, and it would open. A lot of people have complained, what well, in reviews, which again, I think has been a little bit picky, but that is, a, that is something worth mentioning, is that if your phone is sitting down like this, and you push the button, you know, you, you well, you can push the button, there's no button there, but you can unlock the phone from the front. That's that's the main thing I'm trying to say here, because the fingerprint sensor's on the back. 
for me, that isn't a big problem. Like, you know, I do sit at my desk and I do have my phone sitting here, but I open up WhatsApp on a tab on my computer and it stays connected and I really have to actually check my phone. But and when I do, I tend to pick the phone up. I don't, I don't push the button. I don't want to unlock it. I don't need to unlock it like that. And I do think, for me anyway, for the way that I use my phone, having the fingerprint sensor on the back is the best way. You know, there's a lot of reviews out there and they compare the fingerprint sensor, they, they've tested the speed, they've really went a, a little bit OCD about it and they've compared this fingerprint sensor to the iPhone, to, you know, the Samsung S6 and S6 Edge and things like that. And this one has come out on top. Now, I have used a couple of these other phones, but obviously my I wasn't calibrated to, to use the fingerprint sensor. And then, as far as I know, those other phones, they work pretty well with the fingerprint sensor, but I've been very, very impressed with this. I can't compare it to using it with other phones because this is the first phone that I've used on a daily basis that has a fingerprint sensor, but I think it's fantastic. It is, I, I don't know if I could go back now. I don't know if I could go back to a phone that doesn't have a fingerprint sensor. It, it's that useful. Now, what I've been trying to do is, is I've been holding the phone like that and then when I put it in my pocket, so when I bring it out, it's unlocked, you know, it just um, unlocks like that. At the moment, I've only added two fingers, my four fingers. You can add as many fingers as you want. You can add fingers for friends, partners, whatever. And it works really well. The only time I've found that there's a problem is if your hands are wet. So there's been times when I've been washing the dishes or I've washed my hands or something, and then I've tried to use the fingerprint sensor, and it just doesn't seem to recognise it doesn't. It doesn't connect properly. You really need to dry your hands before doing it. But on those occasions that that has happened, all I have did is just unlocked it using the, um, the pattern on the screen, or you can use a pin code, etc. There's it really does work fantastically. I'm very impressed with it, and I really moving forward. I'm hoping that fingerprint sensors are standard across all smartphones, because it is such a fantastic feature. If you've not, if you're not used to it, you know you might not think this is a big selling point for a smartphone, but it is. You know, I, I didn't think there would be a problem for me because I didn't think about a, a big selling point because my last phone, you know, I would just unlock it. It was like two seconds to unlock it. It's not a big thing. But once you're used to it, <laughs> honestly, it, it's fantastic. And it just, it's just, it's in a great position. You know, I, I've, I've got pretty small hands and um, it still feels fantastic for me. So I would say that if this is one of the best selling points of the phone. I think the motor, one of the Motorola phones as well, um, a couple of them have sensors in the same position. So in the future, I hope that smartphones have one on the back and on one on the front. I think that would be the best solution to um, because I think there's pros and cons to having them in, in the back and in the, in, in the front. But for me, it works well in the back. So the last thing I would like to talk about is the camera. And the camera is... I've been very impressed with it, you know. Um, I think when it comes to cameras, I'm probably not, I'm probably the wrong guy to ask. I'm probably the wrong YouTube guy to ask about the opinion for a camera because I think cameras have reached the point where they're all pretty good, you know. It's it stands up well against other high end cameras. So if you look at pictures, if you look at reviews and videos online, most will say that the best at the moment is probably the the S6 or the LG G4 or. Perhaps some will go towards the iPhone. This, it stands up well with them, but it's perhaps not as good. But the thing is, like, I don't know, you look at these reviews and, and they'll show you like six, seven pictures from different phones and cameras and they'll see this one's underexposed, this one, you know, and, and they're really, really picky. And it's easy to remember, um, it's easy to forget, sorry, that this is a smartphone, you know. It is, I'm taking pictures on, on nights out. I'm taking pictures with my friends on, on a day out, and I'm, if I want a p professional um, camera, I would go out and buy one. But I've been very impressed with this. I've been very, very impressed. I've only taken a couple of photos with it, but I found that the, the photographs have been really good and they look fantastic in low light. Um, but this, this phone doesn't have optical uh, image stabilization, so that really causes problems with video. But in place of that, they have electronic image stabilization so essentially instead of trying to stop shaking us through hardware they've did it through software now the front camera has this software the EIS 
the back camera doesn't. So uh, the back camera doesn't if you're doing 4K, sorry. Now the 4K, if you look at the video that I did about vlogging with the Nexus 6P, I'll put that in the description here. The, the, it doesn't have the EIS in 4K mode. Now that's something that could be an issue. If you're recording in 4K and you're walking about like that, you're going to see a lot of shakiness. So that's a problem. So from the 4K video element, it's fantastic that this phone can do 4K in the first place. But for me, you know, in the future, I would like to have OIS and I would like to have the front camera possible of recording 4K simply from a vlogging point of view because, you know, I've got a YouTube channel. I think it'd be fantastic to just hold it up and record 4K this way. But I'm being a little bit picky because the 4K, I found the quality to be really good. The other thing that I found was it has two native modes, 120 and 240 frames per second. And I took some videos of this last Friday, I think it was, um, my friend's grappling, you know, I go, I go to an MMA club, so I, I, sh I showed some clips of my friend's grappling and I, I did a clip with them um, kicking a bag and things and it looked fantastic. It, it was really, really cool how they do it. The only thing I would say though is this comes with the default camera app, the, the Google application for photography. I think it's just called Google, it's just called Google Camera and um, it's very basic. It doesn't have a lot of, too many settings. You know, it's, it's great for, um, for just a point and shoot camera, which is what I want 99% of the time. But when I was trying to do the vlogging um, mode with, um, I wanted something a little bit more and I downloaded another application, um, which was called, if I can see it, I can't even remember the name of that. Nope. So basically, one of the things that I had, one of the problems I had, was with the the default Google Camera app. You you can set no timer. You can set three seconds or ten seconds, and I wanted something with a little bit more uh, control over it. But if you go onto the Google Play Store, there there's there's hundreds. Well, I'll say hundreds. There's probably a good couple of dozen really good ones, camera applications. And if you download those, you're really gonna have a lot more control over what you do. The one that I downloaded, and I can't even find it now, which I should really have checked this before the, vi the video. Open camera. So the one, the one I downloaded was called Open Camera, and this really, this expands the number of features on this phone um, for taking videos. It's unbelievable. It, you can do every, you can set any length of timer. You can, you can set sounds. Um, for example, one of the things that I wanted to do for the vlogging with the Nexus 6P was that when I was recording a video, I wanted to set a countdown. So it would go beep, 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 so that I knew when the video was starting. Little things like that go a long way. The default camera app, though, is really good, and that's what I'll use the majority of the time. But if you're recording videos for YouTube and things like that, there's a lot of these, like, uh, photography applications, a lot of video applications that you're going to find useful. And that's the beauty of Android. You can really, if you don't like like a, a certain application for your camera or something or your browser, you can go and download something else. The thing is, with all that kind of side of things, with the photography side of things, I've found that I'm, I'm an auto type of guy. I have tried to learn about more about photography because I'm, you know, I'm recording YouTube videos and I wanted to learn more about, about improving images, about improving videos. I always refer to, I always revert to auto mode. You're watching this in auto mode, I'm recording in auto mode. I, I just, for me, when it comes to things like this, I really just want, I, want, I do want the best solution, but I, I, ease of use is a big thing for me. I just want things to work. I don't want to be messing about with lots of settings underexposed because if you want to capture the, per the perfect picture, you don't have time to mess about with all these settings and try to change things. You really just want to take the picture and move on. Well, that, that's the way I view things. So as far as the camera goes, I'm very, very impressed with it. Then I'll just get the, so the rear camera is 12.3 camera is megapixels and it's got an f2.0 aperture and 4K 30 frames per second video capture. The front camera is 8 megapixels, so the video quality at the front is pretty good. You know, it's really good for, um, for a front camera, it's really good. And another thing to talk about is the fact that this has Gorilla Glass 4. Now I put a tempered glass screen protector on that, so I'm not, I've not even had a chance to test out and the screen to see if it does scratch easily. It's not something I want to be testing out. But there's a lot of video tests about that uh, online. One final thing I would say though is that if you look online, there's a couple of um, 
videos online that say that this phone bends easily and there's videos of someone just holding the phone and breaking it like that I've, that's, I've not tested it so you really need to see for yourself that but I, 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 I can't see the phone has bent in any way I've got it in a case but it doesn't look like the phone is weak it doesn't look like it's flimsy I think what the reviewer said was that the way that this phone is designed, they've placed the battery down this side and there's no kind of weight at that side, which means that if you do that, it's easy to, to snap the phone. I mean, I don't know. I think if you did that same test with a lot of other phones, it would, the same thing would happen. And if you did have the phone in your pocket and you were constantly sitting down on it, I think you're going to, yeah, you could have problems with it. Quite frankly, anyone who puts the phone in the back pocket and then sits on their phone constantly is stupid and they deserve their phone to, to be destroyed. Because at the end of the day, these are, you know, as, as amazing as smartphones are today, they're still quite delicate in many ways. Personally, I can see why people have hesitations about buying this phone because they've seen a video where someone breaks the phone so easily. But it doesn't feel like that to me. It feels solid. And... I'm I'm glad I didn't have reservations about that issue. I'm glad I just bought it because if I'd seen those videos, I might have had reservations, but I don't think there's a problem. Um, it does look straight to me. The only thing I would say is that I bought this from Amazon France, and for one, Amazon are known fantastic for returns, and secondly, Google are apparently fantastic with returns. So it's not something I'm bothered about. It's If it ever did happen, I would just return it. So it's not something I worry about, but I can understand why other people would be. Um, again, this comes down, if you can, go and see the phone yourself. You really should go and see any phone you buy. When you're going to be spending £400, £500 or $1,000 or whatever, you really should go and see what you're buying. So in my opinion, the Google Nexus 6P is arguably the best phone in the market just now. It's the best all-rounder. I think there's other phones out there that do excel in other areas. For photography, you've got some phones from LG and from Samsung that, you know, many reviewers and many websites are saying that the camera on those phones are better. But I'm very, I've been very impressed with this camera. And again, in the same by the same token, battery life, I think the battery life is fantastic. But the Motorola X Force, which is available for about £500 in the UK, that's got like a, it's like a 4,000 milliamp battery and the battery life is apparently insane. It's like two or three days of, you know, two days of heavy usage. So if battery life is your main concern, you might want to lead towards that phone. But as an all-rounder, I think this is fantastic. You're going to get Marshmallow on this, you get 6.0. This phone is always going to be updated to the latest version of Android, and you're not going to get any crap on it. There's no bloatware, there's no apps on, on this that you can't remove. There's no little processes that are draining your battery. And that's one of the reasons why battery life is good and why the performance is good. Because your Google won't try to sell you or try to... Uh, anything they're not trying to sneak fitness apps in there because they made a deal with fit tracker or something like that they're just giving you what you need and it might be unexciting in many ways because of that you don't have anything gimmicky but as a phone it works great the battery life's fantastic the fingerprint sensor is fantastic the one thing i would say is check the size because that that was something that has a, that i had a reservation about and i think it is something that you should have a reservation about because as i said some of my friends thought the size wasn't an issue but some of them did you really need to see for yourself go into a shop if you can and if you you know pick it up put it in your jeans put it in your pocket try and hold it um, and see how it feels in your hand and if you can't do that check the dimensions online do a cut out and cardboard if you can and, and do the same kind of thing just try and get an idea of how this phone feels personally it, size isn't an issue for me I've, I thought it would be and I was all prepared to send it back if it was too big but it's not a problem. I'm used to it and I'm now in a position now I'm not sure where I'd want to go back to down to a smaller phone because I, th I think this is a great size for me now. Um, yeah, and that's really all there is to it. I mean, it, it's, it just works works well. Everything works well. Battery life, fingerprint sensor, marshmallow. It's got everything I need. Obviously, you really need to see what um, what what is important to you because... I do realise that some people prefer the simplicity of an Apple phone and some people prefer the, the coolness, you know, that you get with the Samsung S6 um, because that's a, that is a sexy little phone. There's no denying it. But if you're looking for a good all-rounder, check out the Google Nexus 6P. And I've, I, I hope I have addressed everything that I found important in this video. But please do do your research and check out some other videos online. 
and if there's anything I missed that you, you're curious about, leave a, a comment below. I'll do my best to answer them, or at least point you in the right direction. And as always, if you've enjoyed the video, please do consider liking the video or subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, guys. Till next time. Cheers.